Okay, so I'm going to hand it over to Alex uh, to continue telling about his resource called Seeking the Lord at Home, which has uh, sure. got a lot of great things to use. I have an updated draft that I was going to share with you all this morning, and then uh, I got an email late last night about some of the resources that we will be um, talking about later that are in Spanish. I did receive a number of questions about if those we had a similar uh, document available for Spanish speakers. Uh, I had asked the uh, Hispanic Ministries Office to, uh, to help us out with that, and they sent last night uh, a link to the Encuentro page that we'll talk about in a second that's got uh, Spanish resources. Uh, and then I'll also just have some updates on Formed. Uh, Formed is giving everyone 40 days free. So normally you can sign on to Formed and get, um, a, you know, a, a, a short period of time as a, as a uh, you know, demo trial subscription. Uh, but now everyone's got it for 40 days for free. So if your um, parish did not opt to renew this year, you can still use the same resources um, and share those with people during this time. And perhaps that might even drum up some interest uh, to get your parish to sign back on or to um, uh, to go ahead and, and uh, subscribe for the first time if you hadn't before. Yeah, uh, and if, you guys, so, if you haven't noticed, uh, it's like a fire sale out there. Everything's yeah. free. Uh, yep. You know, a form has, has, has been generous in, in offering this 40 days free, but like almost every Catholic publisher has released some or all of its content that it has digital for free. They have, yeah. They've been very generous in doing that. Yeah. All mm -hmm. of our uh, resources that we use in RE have been put online for us to use and send to our children and families. Mm -hmm. And there are some, some great uh, things that have popped up that weren't existing before. Uh, I think uh, Carol Wiggett talked about it last time, like Project YM is having like evening gatherings, I think every night at 8 p.m., of uh, for Catholic youth ministry for young people from around the country. Daniel, so, Daniel, not every night. Sunday, oh, so every night. Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday, from seven to eight. Gotcha. Hi, and Bean. it's it's happy feast of the Annunciation. Hey, this Father Bean. Announcement that uh, there was a press conference from the uh, Diocese of Birmingham this morning. Hey, Father Bean, welcome. <laughs> Wait. Did he just pop in? Was Here. that somebody playing Father Bean on their Facebook? <laughs> That's what it sounded like. <laughs> I think so. I was watching Father Bean. <laughs> All right, well, you All keep right. going. Alex, sorry to interrupt. All right, no worries. No worries. Uh, so basically, uh, the, the newest version of that document is, is, is held on until uh, I finish putting in those Spanish resources that we received last night. So uh, just something to keep in mind there. Um, Moving right along, um, Catholify. Uh, Carol, of course, you can feel free to jump in or, or Ginny later on, but uh, Eric uh, called me in a, a frantic uh, bit of energy over the weekend with a great idea, and uh, they've been moving ahead with that. Um, and that is they're, something they're calling church bells. So that will be something that's going to be included uh, in, in that updated version of the uh, Seeking the Lord at Home, as well as a link to their information on church bells, which is basically the idea that uh, within Catholify, there does exist and they're continuing to improve uh, abilities to <coughs> impact anyone who is a member of your parish has the app installed. And so what you're able to do is, uh, is send an announcement to everyone in your parish that the streamed mass from your church is about to start and they would be able to just click through and follow that directly on their device. Uh, so, you know, some of us are trying to watch mass on our TVs. That's great. But to have the availability to have a, a little notification pop up, I know uh, some of the parishes, depending on, on what father's got going on and uh, what's happening, the mass schedules are also a bit of a mess. So uh, some, some parishes are just streaming at their normal mass time. And some parishes are having masses set at all kinds of different times during the day. Uh, and those are the ones that are going online. So this gives you an opportunity to let any parishioner know, you know, here comes the message. Hey, mass is starting at 
you know, your parish uh, online in five minutes. Um, it particularly works well with YouTube if Father is streaming directly to YouTube uh, as opposed to Facebook. So there's just one little uh, technical thing to throw out there along those lines. And that is that um, uh, as of six or seven months ago, you could stream your whatever to many different outlets at the same time, Facebook being one of them. But over the last couple of months, uh, Facebook has limited their availability. And so if you stream directly to Facebook Live, you can't share that with people who don't have Facebook immediately. You can't simultaneously share it other places. Uh, so uh, what we're being encouraged to do is to use something like YouTube to go live on YouTube, which can then be shared and posted live to your Facebook to send out to people. And that way people can watch it on their television. They can watch it on their computer, watch it on their phone. If they have Facebook, they can watch it there. If they don't have Facebook, they can watch it there. Um, so uh, it's just a, something to keep in mind. And so Catholify, this new tool of church bells uh, will play very, very nice that, with that concept. And what it, what it does is, you know, we're finding, obviously, we don't want to, we're not trying to be mercenary uh, and take advantage of this situation. However, um, one of the blessings of having to be forced to communicate this way is that we're developing pathways of communication with people who were ignoring our messaging before. It's very easy for messages and updates from church to get lost in the shuffle when you're flooded with the daily responsibilities of life and you don't listen really to what's happening at church. Well, now people are listening. And so Catholify is a great app that lets you do small groups and Bible studies and prayer groups and prayer intentions and praying for one another and a really cool digital rosary and access to all kinds of Catholic resources. Using it in this way will perhaps give you an opportunity to get it installed on people's devices that didn't have it before. So you can say to your people in your weekly email, if you want to get up to the minute notice when we're going to stream mass, install the Catholify app. Now they've got it. And now you can communicate with them in that way. Uh, the same would go for formed. It was very hard. It's been very hard all along for us to get individuals to install it on their TV, on their computer, on their phone, on their iPad. Well, now we have an opportunity to get them to actually install it because they need to use these things. Uh, so we've got, we've got some, some play there. So just a, a word on Catholify. And uh, if you have trouble envisioning how Catholify would work for you in this way, Eric is putting out a, a sheet that's going to give you those instructions, but also feel free to contact him, contact them. They're very responsive. They're local. They want this to work. They want to know how it's going to grow. So if you want to know how the heck would I use Catholify to get my parishioners to know when we're streaming mass, just ask and they can walk you through it. So I would really encourage everybody to take a look at that. Um, just jump over now, if we could slide Daniel for Encuentro, uh, the fifth Encuentro, which most of us have probably heard of a few times at this point, um, talks a lot about, um, you know, it, it was an event that happened, but it's a process as well. And so they've, managed to keep their website going and keep resources moving. And so uh, in Quintro, I would say of all the uh, national level USCCB associated ministries was the first one to really embrace using Zoom for meetings from the beginning. They've been doing international Zoom conference calls for the Encuentro longer than I think anybody in Catholic church ministry. Uh, so they have a lot of uh, experience in this. And so they've created this page that's got all kinds of Spanish resources. So I will include a few of these resources directly on Seeking well, the Lord at Home. Hey, but Alex, most of I them, would, yeah. Alex, I would say it's English and Spanish. I mean, like if you- Well, check, that's the thing, like that. right. So, and that's, that's the beautiful thing about the way they work is that they are working both with immigrant populations who do not speak English, as well as naturalized people who are of Spanish descent who've been in the United States for generations. And so, um, or Spanish speaking uh, descent, I should say. So, so they, you can read this and find the resources to send to people, even if you are not a Spanish speaker or involved in Hispanic ministries. So it has English resources for your English speaking population, 
but it also has Spanish speaking resources. And those Spanish speaking resources are accessible by someone who doesn't speak Spanish. So it really is kind of like the holy grail of Catholic church resource right now, because it allows those of us who are not fluent in Spanish to have access to sharing information, both in English and in Spanish. So beautiful resource, far better fleshed out than, than the one that I created uh, and, and, and really pretty and online and all that. So definitely take a look at that one. And we will link that from Seeking the Lord at Home as well, uh, just to have everything in one easy place to get to. Um, uh, so let's move on to the next one. Um, we have some links directly to the USCCB prayer guides uh, from the Seeking Lord at Home document, but it's just an easy place to go. Um, it's got the Archbishop Gomez, the president of the USCCB's uh, official prayer, asking our patroness, Our Lady of Guadalupe, to preserve us and protect us in this time, but also a whole bunch of others. <clears throat> links to Mass, links to ways to pray, links to the readings, links to Lexio Divina links to all kinds of things. They're, they're a little bit slower maybe than some of our immediate responses, but you can guarantee they're going to be very well fleshed out when it comes from them. So uh, take a look at what's on usccb.org as well. And then, um, so along these lines with these resources at home, um, there's a couple of things why we keep hammering this. Uh, we've been talking a lot about family-based catechesis and catechesis in, in the home for a long time. You've heard Daniel bang that drum a lot and we're gonna keep banging it. And this is why, because in the moments where parents are the only ones available to teach their children the faith, they have to be resourced and prepared to teach the children their faith. We've kind of gotten very comfortable with the drop-off mentality and letting the church do it for us. But we're now in a position where we don't have that luxury anymore. And so our jobs as catechists shifts from being teachers of children to resources of parents. And so we want to, this is a, a terrible situation we're in, but we all know that God can bring wonderful fruits out of terrible situations. One of the fruits that God could bring out of this is it's been hard to change that role. It's been hard to change our role from being the professional teachers of faith to being the supporters and educators of parents. And God has given us an opportunity where that role has been broken. We don't have a choice. Uh, and so we could, we could bemoan it and we can suffer it or we can prayerfully embrace it and do it the best we can and use it as a chance to really show people how this ought to be working in terms of us sharing things with parents and having them be the primary catechists of their children, which is something we always say, but it rarely ever happens in practice. And now we have an opportunity to make it the regular practice. So uh, we want to encourage that with our parents. We want to offer our parents as many resources as they can have because they're going to feel ill-equipped and, and likely just skip it. Uh, the other things we're dealing with right now is an overabundance of information from schools and a ton of school information in some of our school districts. And so parents feel really burdened by that. So we wanna be sensitive to that and, and be as helpful as we can in that way. Um, but we also want to have a mind for what comes next. When life goes back to not this, I won't say normal because I don't think life is going back to normal. Um, it, it, there are just too many massive changes that have happened in the way we communicate and what this lockdown has done, I think it will be lasting in some ways. And so what comes next? Preparing our catechists and then also our families that when we go back to church on Sunday, we don't stop learning faith at home. We don't stop using these faith resources in the house. How do we create a structure? So that's one of the reasons why we just keep hammering you with all of these options for what can be done at home is we want to, we want to make sure everybody feels confident and well-resourced and fleshed out for the ongoing process of this, even after we move beyond uh, this time of virus. So Daniel, you've got still got the, uh, now you, you've got uh, communications policies up next, correct? Yeah. And I want to pause too, just for a minute in between things uh, and, and, you know, bear in mind that we are being recorded, but um are there any effective uh, strategies that you guys have implemented in your parish? Anything you've done to uh, share the liturgy, to share resources, 
uh, connect uh, with small groups, anything uh, that you've just seen success with that you'd like to share with the group. Take a couple minutes for that. Daniel and Alex, one of the things that I found from the pastoral center was the, literally the word at home for Sunday. Yes. yes. And I got feedback almost immediately, not from a whole lot of my parents, but they really liked that resource because it gave them a way of being part, like even giving reading parts to the kids at the house. And, you know, didn't it doesn't take away from watching the full mass on TV, but it gave them a more interactive um, ability with the kids so that they could feel part, you know, even reading the intercessions or doing something of that sort. And it really, I just thought it was a great resource. So you're exactly right, Carmen, uh, that that resource that the pastoral uh, center put out is pr pretty unparalleled because it, it not only points to their resources, which are good, but it point, it just gives it a, a context of how you can do this. It gives you a exactly. I, so I sent that to all of my parents mm -hmm. and along with their textbook, let's say that whatever I could get from what we're using that went online and I, didn't want to add a whole lot more. And I think that speaks to what Alex was saying about overburdening them with not only the re requirements that they're having to complete from schools and so on, you know, on top of, you know, maybe doing something for religious ed. So I, I really liked it when I saw it and uh, thought it would be a great uh, time for the family to do things together in a more interactive way. And, you know, going through the liturgy of the word for Sunday. Yeah, Mary Beth Crumley, can you hear me? <clears throat> yes. Uh, you, you make use of, of resources for family catechesis from the pastoral center already, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to uh, parlay that into using it digitally at this time? I'll be honest with you. Um, I have communicated with our families, but mm -hmm. according to our PSR schedule, and mm -hmm. I know things have changed, according to our PSR schedule last Sunday, this Sunday, there is- We're still PSR. spring break? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So what I've been trying to do is kind of- um, Respect that. It set the expectations is sure. what I'm doing, that come the first week in April, this is what we're looking at. And um, I've talked with catechists to see if they are um, at all comfortable with maybe leading like a Zoom type 30 minute max mm -hmm. uh, kind of online class and then pushing the materials to the parents to have them then utilize with the kids. And I'll tell you what, one, one idea guys that requires um, a little bit of time but not a lot of preparation and, and nothing more than someone's interest or care is that if we can share some form of communication materials with our individual catechists, and they could either send a, an email, a text message, or make a phone call to the families just to check in and say, hey, you know, we, we, we miss you, we care about you. That helps to delegate out some of that responsibility so it's not all on you. And, yeah. and I think it could be meaningful to families who are very isolated right now too. Yeah. But any other uh, uh, good uh, experiences or things you'd want to share before we move on? Okay. Well, we'll ask that question every week. So you missed your chance now. <laughs> Next Wednesday, come on back. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, last Friday, I sent out a message to all the folks on our distribution list to let you know the bishop had approved uh, the adoption of some new um, policy statements uh, regarding uh, electronic communications with minors. Our existing DAS and code of conduct is um, not really fully fleshed out on this topic and the Catholic schools office, uh, because they're more, more regularly engaging, uh, you know, on a daily basis and, and uh, teaching environments with minors, uh, had some of this fleshed out already. So Bishop approved to, uh, to just use their policy statements because they're good um, you know, they're thoughtful. Um, so I'll show you one of them right now. 
uh, there's, there's two. One that has been in existence from 2014, um, and it, it creates some good distinctions. It talks about differences between uh, like a, a media that's used for a school or a program wide, and then a person and how we can distinguish between those things and uh, what the limitations ought to be. It gives some guidance on like times of day, in which we ought to um, set up meetings with minors. It has that kind of, um, you know, trying to always involve the families and the parents so that they've got access to things as well. Uh, it's got the, the two deep, you know, leadership rule. There's also a new policy statement that the public schools office adopted just last week that was uh, kind of a, a, an addendum to their existing one. And, um, and it, it's a lot of other common sense stuff too, like uh, if you're using video conferencing, it should be in a common space in the home. Uh, you know, that professionalism should be um, kept up. That, again, it, it kind of emphasizes the, the too deep rule. Um, so, uh, do you guys have any questions about those? Any thoughts? Any concerns? Anything you'd like to share? Um, are those on the website? I, I will post them on my website. Right now, they are uh, shared by email. I sent them on. Uh, okay, or Friday if we can have them by email, just in case we don't, we don't have that situation with us right now. But if it gets to that point, to make sure we know that the catechists have what they okay. need to know. It it is in your email, Carmen. It got sent out at uh, four p.m. on on Friday. But I'll okay. add it to our website as well. Sorry, haven't read all my email yet. <laughs> That's okay. If, if it came out at a weird time. If you don't find it in your inbox, I know for certain that Billy has the same policies over at the school. Yeah, oh, they, yeah. they sent them out as well. So, so they're on premise, even if you didn't get the email. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Daniel, I had a, I had a question um, because we started using um, a Catholify small group for our teens to go yep. with the Project YM uh, digital youth groups. And we were, I have instructed my team to not respond to teen comments after nine and before seven in the morning. Sure. Um, but do you think that would include prayer requests? Because when you post a prayer request on there, you get a notification that someone- Oh, you mean like the, like a thumbs up kind of thing? Like we're Well, they, they would get a message that said, uh, Carol prayed in our father for your prayer request. And I, I figure since that's impersonal, it might be okay, but I just wanted to clarify. Uh, I, I kind of think that that's not a direct communication with a minor when you're doing these sort of group response things. Well, I, I would say on, on a best practices, Daniel, outside of what we're used to here, yeah, um, that I, I I think I would just avoid it oh, really? um, okay. because well. because the the idea would be that a conversation could go something like, well, so and so was thinking about my child at three in the morning. Yeah, you know? so there may, I would there may just be some say, truth to that. I would just say leave the. I I would say don't respond in those as well. Okay. Um, you know, that, that would be I would my, say my gut. Also, the, the policy doesn't, just doesn't cover that. Right. But what, it, what it's envisioning <laughs> is, you know, you having a classroom, you having a group chat, mm -hmm. having some kind of direct communication with people, mm -hmm. uh, kind of responsive mm -hmm. communications. I think that Alex is probably right, just uh, erring on the side of prudence. But I, I don't think that that's the kind of thing it was envisioning. Well, I'm glad I asked. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I think if we let those expectations be known to the mind <clears throat> with two, they can work within those parameters too. They, they'll know that, hey, I haven't heard back because these are the, the boundaries that we're working in, you know. All right. Go back to it. Uh, again, we've got these shared resource folders. These are uh, a lot different from what um, Alex has been producing and also what like the Encuentro has produced and USCCB and any other source, you know, Pastoral Center. This is meant to be like local stuff. So if you make something and it is for a particular um, catechetical program for confirmation, for First Communion, for PSR, for our staff, for youth ministry, for anything, um, you know, and something that could be widely used by others, please share it. This is, a, is an open uh, space where we can kind of just drag and drop our materials 
and they can be of use to one another. Um, and I know some people, I think last week, one or two had some difficulty in uh, doing that. There might've been some technical problem. If there is, if you have any difficulty in just getting right into this, just email it to me as an attachment and I will drop it in for you and people can still have access to it. Um, but I think that we could over time build up a, a good repository of, of a lot of stuff that we're gonna produce and we don't have to reinvent wheels. Um, so just think about that. Um, a couple of people took advantage of this uh, offer for assistance with um, remote technology. I helped one person set up some Locknote accounts and another um, just talk through how to, to use uh, YouTube as a platform. But if you just want a person to talk to, uh, if you want to, the way we'll do it is just have a very simple conversation about what your needs are, what your community is, uh, what a menu of options might be, and if there's anything that we can uh, walk you through or send you resources about. Uh, Alex and I, uh, we're not you know, IT experts, but we're happy to be a partner to you. Uh, and so if you'd like to, you can sign up here uh, and we'll, we'll do whatever we can to help. Um, okay. Speaking of which, Daniel, I added one slide after this one. Okay. Uh, so we have in Birmingham a Catholic family that um, uh, have helped us out a number of different times with uh, some of our video conferencing needs for the diocese. Um, they're heavily involved in the community around St. Rose School. Um, and uh, they actually have a business that is a professional Zoom consulting firm. Uh, this is what they do all day, every day. They outfit businesses um, with Zoom accounts and technology that works well with Zoom uh, and, and how to use it. And they do training and installs. And so I know a number of places have been able to stream things easily by just father grabbing his phone and hitting the go live button on Facebook. Um, but uh, if you're looking for a more holistic solution, if you're looking for an ongoing solution, if you're looking for things like ways to meet with students uh, in classrooms or with catechists uh, and have longer meetings, or uh, if father's just not the technical guy that's going to get mass streamed from the church and you need some help in that regard, uh, Joanne and Mark are wonderful. They're really easy to work with. They're very generous. They always give us, uh, give the church, uh, you know, certainly if, 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 and when they ever do charge, they, they, they are extremely reasonable, uh, with when they serve the church. So, um, they have a, a business here in Birmingham. The email address is there. Uh, and this would be something maybe if you're thinking in terms of Facebook doesn't go to TVs, people want to watch the mass on their television. Uh, so how do we make that happen? Um, how do I make the videos that I made of these classes available on YouTube later after we zoom them? Like those types of questions that you may have struggles with. Uh, it's just another resource that we have available to us uh, over at Quorum VC. So. Very good. Okay. Um, is there any kind of comment or question you guys want to make before we say our closing prayer, anything that would be a part of a recording? We'll still remain together after the recording to, to talk, but uh, anything that you want to share? I have a question because we are probably maybe the only parish that will have confirmation in the fall. Mm -hmm. And um, we had been told earlier in the year before all of this started that we should be getting some kind of message from the diocese by the beginning of May as to when we would have our confirmation. So do I um, sort of figure out that that may be delayed as well? Um, well, when a, when a new bishop takes um, possession of a diocese, uh, all of the people who were vicars, you know, uh, have to, to be reassigned and all confirmations get rescheduled. Okay. So now our I, I'm, I'm just, that okay. sounded official. So I said it. But it's, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, I, so, um, I mean, I, I will check with Father Ward, who's the, the, the uh, Vicar for Sacred Liturgy, and I'll let him know that you guys had that expectation. And I would assume that they can certainly be in communication with you in the next two months to try to get some, something to you. Just an idea, yeah. Um, sure. And I know this doesn't apply to everybody, but I, I figure 
I'd ask because I've got you guys here as we're. <laughs> That's a good question. Don't necessarily have the answer, but I, I definitely wanted to see if if do we have to wait till June to installation or. I my my guess is is that you know. Well, to have uh, some complication to our our previous confirmation schedule because of the quarantine. You know, there's a lot of suspensions going on and that's going to require rescheduling. But there's also, now we have, we have our, our new bishop. And mm -hmm. so, um, that's a happy thing, but it'll also mean, uh, you know, returning to some of these things and looking over them. I, I don't, at this point, know, you know, exactly all of what that process will be. Well, yeah. we don't even have a date anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel? It's, it's going to be a, a two, it's going to cut both ways, really, right? Because on the one hand, um, we're, we already need to reschedule the ones that were canceled or postponed mm -hmm. because of coronavirus. So there's already dates that have to be rescheduled before they even consider new scheduling. On the flip side, once Bishop Rika arrives, even though he won't technically be installed, they can start making those plans. They don't have to wait to June to make plans. Gotcha. Yeah. And then once June happens, we go back to having two bishops available for confirmations. Thank God. <laughs> so hey, it, it's going to cut both ways. <laughs> yes. Um, hey, I'm sorry, because I may have missed this last week. So as far as confirmations go, then all, all current ones are on hold to be rescheduled. The, the, only, the only statement that, that is sure right now regarding that was that for the period of time that we have this suspension until a reevaluation at the beginning of April, all mm -hmm. of them during that time are suspended. Okay. I, my guess, my guess as Daniel McCormick is that that suspension will continue, but that's not a statement right now. So. Okay. So then best case scenario, if everything got up and going normally, we could expect to have our confirmations in April and May as expected. Okay. So if it continues on, these issues some kind of statement that we can formally send out to parents because I am getting bombarded with sure. what about the sacraments that goes for yeah. both confirmation and first communion yeah so, um, if we have something that we could formally send out that would be an incredible help okay and maybe maybe even if it is just like at this time you know people yes. uh, there's there's but it comes from you all instead on. of us you know guessing yeah, yeah. sure uh, I'll, I'll I'll request that and I'll try okay. on that and see Thank if we can you. have some statement you could refer to. Thank you. Sure. Um, anything else you guys? Hey, Daniel, can you hear me? Hey, Angie. Hey, how are you? Um, I wanted to share, oh my gosh, I am so technology technology challenged, but I did want to share with everyone that if you have an iPhone, I don't know if it works on other phones, but if you swipe up or swipe down where you see your flashlight, there is a screen mirroring option and anything you watch on your phone will be projected to the TV. So we do a lot of family catechesis stuff using just my phone. I don't have to have any extra cords. Yeah. But especially during when you're watching the mass now or when you're wanting to watch formed or even Catholicite, anything, you can put it up on your TV. Yeah. If you, you, you're able to cast uh, from different devices in different ways, you know, and, and that is a good thing to know. And, and that might even be something that like if we, we learn how to do that and we expect that our families don't know how, we could share that with them as we share resources. Yeah. All right, guys, um, let me get uh, one of our number to close us. With. Um, thank you, Jennifer, for leading us to start. How about Kelsey? Can you read the screen? Yes. All right, would you close us in prayer? Sure. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. 
Blessed be God and his angels and in his saints. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, so guys, we will continue uh, to have these uh, weekly meetings uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, Alex and I will work very hard to keep them 30, 40 minutes at most. We want to respect your time, but we also want to be able to see each other's faces and, and share stuff. So, Without right. makeup? Are you crazy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Make sure you put yours on next week. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you all for sharing your time today. I'm going to stop the recording, and if you guys would like to talk, uh, let's do that. And don't forget, at noon today, pray in our Father. It's our Holy Father's request to them um, for all those affected by the virus. So stop them now. Amen. Thank you.